Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So out of all the OS updates, which Apple announced at WWDC 25, I feel iPad OS got really some amazing features and let me show you all of those in my video. I have installed the developer beta on my iPad Pro and let's look at all that coolness. Just before we proceed guys, please hit that like button and do subscribe if you're visiting my channel for the first time so I can keep making these videos for you. Let's get started so you can see that transparent effect everywhere, which Apple is calling it as liquid glass. I particularly like it on folders. I mean, see how super cool this looks. Like how would it look if you're viewing something overlaid onto real life through, I don't know, like Apple Vision Pro or a VR headset or smart glasses? Is this what Apple is prepping us for in the future? Time will tell. Mostly it works, but I feel that in some places, it looks a bit messy, like the control center. Everything being so translucent kind of blurs visibility and makes it look untidy. Maybe when we bring the control center, if the whole screen blurs even more, then I think this would work. Even when the background is overlapping onto these fixed translucent objects and menu items, I feel it does not go well all the times. Maybe a much more solid option in such places would make better sense. I think Apple should give us an option to control this. And then you have that clear style option applied to everything if needed. For that, you need to long press on an app or the home screen to get into that jiggle mode and choose edit, then choose customize. Now you have a new option called clear. That turns everything into this translucent look. I'm not sure I like it as it certainly hampers visibility and readability, but you can turn it off totally and pretend that it never existed in first place. Folders also get this cool customization option so you can give them color and a tag or an emoji, making it really easy to visually locate them if you've got many stored in one place. Just long press on a folder and choose customize folder and tags. And from here, you can choose the color as well as the icon or an emoji and it is all done. And from the same menu, you can also choose add it to the dock and it is added here. I think this still needs a little bit of polishing as you can see it looks like this and I can't move it anywhere and when you expand it, it flips out all your files into this cool format but you can see it's little off screen. But again guys, this is developers beta so we are expected to have some bugs here and there. Oh, there is a new preview app as well which allows you to open most type of files including PDFs and you can edit them as well like how I'm signing this PDF document here. On photos, those that have this foreground and background separation or shot on portrait mode, you get a new option, which is this new icon, which turns the picture into a 3D spatial view. And that gives you this kind of a cool 3D effect. It doesn't have to be a new picture. It works on all the old ones as well. But like I said, it needs to be have taken using portrait mode or have that clear background and foreground separation. Next, the magnifying select tool also got this clear liquid glass update. So it's much bigger and it does look cool and is more helpful to choose even just a few alphabets of a word and not the word in total. However, it does apply this sort of distorted effect to the edges, making it look again a bit untidy. I think a little refinement would make this look really good. And as it is, I am loving this option. Next, let's look at that cool PC Mac style floating windows. These controls are present in multitasking gestures in settings section. So you now have the option to choose full screen apps, which will just make your iPad work normally as how it always did. And then you have stage manager, which allows you to resize windows, but it always gives you a fixed left menu of recently opened items. But you have this third option now, which says the new floating style windows. And if you choose that, then you get that free from option where you can fully utilize the screen space as needed. When this new setting is enabled, every app that you open will show this corner icon using which you can freely resize the windows as needed and move it wherever you like. If you want to open more, just resize the window enough so that the dock shows up and then choose whatever app you need from the dock and then you can resize that as well and move it wherever you need. If you want to open an app which is not on the dock, then just tap on the empty space and that coolly pushes the existing windows to the side, allowing you to choose the app you need. 
So using this way, you can choose as many as you need. Every app also has this three new dots to the left hand corner. Tapping on it allows you to maximize, minimize or even close the app. But if you tap and hold the maximize icon, it gives you the window tiling options using which you can snap your existing windows into these predefined tiles. Same as how you do it on a Windows PC or a Mac. Swiping up gives you this expose view where you can see all of your current windows like this and then swiping them again will take you to the home screen. But the next time when you open the same app, your iPad will remember the previous size and the position which you set on it. You can also take a window like this and snap it to the sides by pushing it towards that, giving you that easy multitasking window option. You also get a grab bar in the middle using which you can resize the windows as needed. Now, on every app, if you swipe a bit from the top, you get this contextual menu relevant to that app, just like on Mac. From here, you get the option to choose several options related to the app, like for instance, on Safari, I can go file and choose a new window or a new private tab or even go to edit and undo or redo all pretty cool and would be super useful when you're working with a mouse, right? So let's just do that. Here is my ESR rebound keyboard case for the iPad Pro and wow, just look at that. You get a proper mouse pointer now instead of that round puck before. Now this new pointer the top menu bar and the option to maximize, minimize or close windows. What amazing difference it makes to your whole user interface and the way you use the iPad. I mean, now using the iPad feels more like using a Mac. Wow, Apple really did pull an amazing middle ground here, guys. They didn't port Mac OS to the iPad, but adding these significant changes they made using the iPad feel more Mac like. And at the same time, you can turn off all of this and use your iPad just like before as a standard tablet if needed. So with iPadOS 26, did Apple single-handedly make the iPad super interesting again? I totally feel so. And mind you guys, all these new features are supported on a lot of iPads, including the 329 pounds entry-level iPad 11th gen. Now that is insane. I'm loving this whole idea of using my iPad with a precision mouse pointer, minimizing and maximizing windows and using that top menu option. And this setup becomes even more powerful when you hook up an external monitor, add a keyboard and the mouse, and that gives you a full Mac-like setup and you can actually do some serious work using this. And all of this is just running from your iPad. Gosh, that is really incredible. And guys, I did so much of my video and did not even talk about Apple intelligence updates. But yes, we do get a bunch more like the ability to merge emojis and get new styles on image playground. But the cool one is the ability to access Apple intelligence on screenshot mode where you can just circle something and find more details about it, which for some reason is not available here, guys. I mean, I'm in the UK and it's an AI related feature, which I think will be rolled out a bit later compared to the United States. So I am unable to test that here. There are also some cool features like there is background processing where you can export a 4K video and don't have to stay on the screen. It will show you the progress bar and you can use your iPad as needed. It would be amazing on LumaFusion, but this app still doesn't support it yet. So I'll have to wait for that until it becomes available as well. You can also add backgrounds on messages. There is a new phone app on your iPad so you can make calls on your iPad via your iPhone. There is a new games app and there are so much more. iPad OS usually gets all those features from iOS anyways, including live translations, a new FaceTime app and more. So really guys, iPad does get a solid update this time, making it much more useful and bringing it ever so closer to being an actual laptop replacement. What are your thoughts about this, guys? Do you feel the same? Is there one killer feature which you loved from the video which I showed you today? Do drop that in the comment section down below. And once again, guys, if you're enjoying my content, please hit that like button. Do subscribe if you're visiting my channel for the first time so I can keep making these videos for you. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.